And so it was that the fate of Headshoots was entrusted to Spoon Boy Bodice Saves, sole surviving child of Pimp Must Ring Pact and Apotheosis Inked Myth. Spoon Boy was a troubled child when he assumed the mantle, having lost his parents and two sisters to the demons, and his first thought upon taking control was to create a fitting tribute to his fallen family, and of course, the dozens of others who lost their lives in the tragedy. So begins Year Ten, The Rule of Spoon Boy. I have plans, grand plans, for the tribute to our fallen brethren. It came to me in a dream, and upon waking, I immediately began drawing up the design. Unfortunately, things are worse than I thought. I have only seven workers with which to build the monument, and almost no wood. I immediately drafted everyone into a masonry team and began work. There was no need to tend the fields or work the forges. Headshoots could survive for years on its existing stockpiles. Thankfully, an elven caravan arrived almost immediately, bringing me much-needed wood. I ordered the military to seize the entire caravan supplies. There was no time to waste bartering with the elves when there was a tribute to construct. Shortly afterwards, a band of goblins arrived to lay siege. Such needless distractions. I mentioned them to Holistic Detective, but he decided to choose the opportunity to take a nap and as the rest of his squad seemed to like watching him sleep, I decided to delegate the job to Nemo2342. I gave him command of half of the original Six Dwarf squad, all that was left of the once mighty Righteous Barricades, and sent him on his way. Mafeta completely destroyed the goblins to the north with his adamantine spear, while Nemo2342 attacked the group to the south, single-handedly taking them down. I paid no mind to the details. As long as the pests were taken care of, I could concentrate on the construction of the tribute. Not long after the goblins were taken care of, some migrants arrived. Great nobility. Just what we needed. The tax collector Unib Artobolan has arrived. The hammerer Sarvesh Erisseng has arrived. The count Meng Abanomal has arrived. Wise Dakost Oslikot has arrived. Dungeon Master Dusim Odorith has arrived. Some migrants have arrived, despite the danger. The nobles immediately started acting like they owned the place, demanding the best rooms and a myriad of other useless trinkets. I gave them what they wanted as quickly as I could and turned my thoughts back to the tribute progress on which had stalled since the arrival of the royalty. Thankfully, around thirty other dwarves had arrived at the same time. I would need plenty of strong backs if I was going to complete the tribute. Shadow Gamer Aleph Misal died today. I did not catch the details, but Holistic Detective was seen in the area at the time. He says he didn't do it, but it's quite suspicious nonetheless. Shadow Gamer Ala Themsal, gem enthusiast, has been struck down. Holistic detective Chobeth Zuglar, Remnosim Etnar, champion, is more experienced. No matter, I have more important issues on my plate. I've run out of wood again, and I need more to complete my monument. I drafted most of the jobless dwarves into the masonry team and kept working on the stone portion, hoping for a caravan to arrive with more lumber. The nobles demanded a fortress guard, and after constant pestering, I acquiesced to their demands. No sooner had I ordered the guard's formation than three of my best workers, Manuel Calavera, Captain Awesome, and Robot Uprising, were being dragged to the jail for who knows what. I didn't even know we had a jail. Someone constructed an artifact today, a granite cabinet. Bimbul Rungakfikad, peasant, has created Du's Niche, a granite cabinet. It was yet another needless delay. Progress on the tribute has slowed, despite the extra workers. Still no wood. My prayers were answered. A human diplomat arrived, along with a caravan bearing enough wood to finish the parts I would need for the tribute. I seized the goods without delay, but the diplomat would not leave us alone. 
Eventually, her motives became clear. The Count Meng Abenomo meets with the human diplomat Iskak Istros. Peace is calling out to us. How do you respond? I had what I needed from them. War was the only answer. They would face the same fate as the hundreds of others who had tried in the past to wrest away Headshoot's vast riches. They would die. Well, they would die after the tribute was completed. You're getting fatter was thrown in jail today for annoying the Countess. Apparently he was tap dancing on the floor directly above her room. As part of his punishment, his feet were set on fire. He did not survive. The tribute starts to take shape. However, progress on the monument is not without its casualties. Our recently arrived dungeon master fell to his death after some scaffolding was removed from underneath him. Rumors that he was pushed by the hammerer and an accomplice seem unfounded at this point. A skeletal fire imp was distracting masons working on the tribute. He was swiftly dealt with. I must complete it. I will work day and night. I will not sleep until it's complete. My family deserves to be remembered. Another casualty. He apparently died of thirst after getting stuck whilst completing a wall. He will be remembered by the very tribute he helped create. Another artifact, some sort of gold opal chain, completely unimportant. The tribute is nearly complete. Odom Rithalis, gem cutter, has created Rithal Lektad, a gold opal chain. Today's the day! Today I finally finish the tribute! I'm so excited I can barely breathe. I order the last pump to be put in place and stand back to admire what I had created. To quote Professor Bling, a great poet and songwriter who, like many of Hedjut's original inhabitants, was lost to tragedy. We be pouring out of forty of finest dwarven ale to remember those who fought so that Hedjut's would not fail. You will be remembered. For those interested, I submit the plans of the tribute for your perusal. Archivist's Note For those readers who don't speak ASCII, here is a three-dwarf render, posted by Frog.